we had a racism recovery plan mm. for students, um, and well, for people of color, really. But you know, our context is here talking about college campuses, so actually that could be students, faculty, and staff on a college campus. Um, people need to expect that racism is going to occur, and that means that if it's going to occur, you need to have a plan for recovering. Because what we know is, as we've seen, it can take real, it can have a real impact on our bodies, right? A real impact on our, our psychological selves as well as our physical selves. And so you need a plan, right? And so in that plan, we really highlight what it's like to take note for yourself of what is, what, what are you like when you are doing well, mm. right? Um, what, what activities are you engaged in? What are your thoughts like? What, are the, what is your social time like? Who are you spending time with? When things are really going well? Because that, when things are not going well, right, you need to remember that because that's an indicator that, oh, I'm mm -hmm. not engaging in these activities anymore. I'm not um, having these feelings. Or I'm not reading these things, whatever it happens to be. And then from there, we really try to set people up with sort of like a centered, a, dated, uh, a daily maintenance um, or a daily centeredness plan where you can list the things that you need to do in order to be able to self-correct, mm -hmm. right? Um, and well, what's really important about it is that you put some effort into this before the racism occurs. We've seen, like, when the racism occurs, your cognitive faculties are, are depleted, right? Um, your executive functioning is really impaired, and executive functioning is here in this place where we make good decisions, where we can prioritize things, where we can think clearly, mm -hmm. right? And so racism actually makes us not think so clearly, right? Um, and so if you have the centeredness plan, you can actually have some strategies for being able to come back, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other piece that's a, that's a really important part of the plan is to know what your triggers are. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, for many of us, we probably know what the triggers are. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we just have not really sat down and thought about them before. I know like being in a space where something racist is said, of course, that's the trigger. Um, the indicator for me is that I might tilt my head and say, did that just happen? Right. That's all. Uh, it's always an indicator like some, something did just happen mm -hmm. in this space. Mm -hmm. Right. That I need to attend to. Um, and what we know is that students in those types of situations, when they get triggered, then they can start having the ruminations about them, right? And again, your cognitive uh, function is really impacted that way. So to know what your triggers are, then you have the centeredness plan that you can come back to, to then begin deal with the different phases. So like if you're in an mm -hmm. acute phase, or if you're in a severe phase, or if you're really sort of like in a, in a disaster phase, right, around racism. Um, moving through to, what do you do to reintegrate yourself back into your community of support, right, which is gonna be really necessary mm -hmm for recovering and surviving, recovering from and surviving racism. Um, but the fundamental thing is you need a plan mm -hmm. because it's gonna occur, right? Mm -hmm. So even as we're talking about these things, how do you survive microaggressions? How do you survive racism? It's really about what, what are you putting in place? What skills and tools are you putting in place for yourself to be able to resist racism, right? right? Because it's gonna happen. Right. In a very proactive, mm -hmm. overt way. Right. I love that you know that the word plan is there because that means that we're being proactive. Mm -hmm. We can actually plan for it just yes. because we know it's going to happen. Right. 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 If you know that you're there's a likelihood that you might get into a car accident every time you drive, you're probably going to put a seatbelt on, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to protect yourself so we can arm yes. students. Uh, I love the framework yes. that you just shared because that's a beautiful way and an elegant way for students to mm -hmm. arm themselves mm -hmm. for these things that they are going to right. encounter. Right. And probably similar to the conversation about microaggressions, we should also say white people, white administrators, white faculty, white staff, white students also need a plan do. for when racism occurs. Mm -hmm. Right. We didn't write that plan. Um, but uh, we really need to be thinking about how do we help white people deal with their white racial anxiety? Mm -hmm. How do we help them deal with their white fragility? Mm -hmm. um, how do we deal with their white rage? Whatever mm -hmm. it happens to be, wherever mm -hmm. they are, mm -hmm. as a result of sort of like living in a racist society, mm -hmm. because we also need white people to be doing the work, oh, yeah. right, in order to be able to make sure that we're creating inclusive, equitable mm -hmm. campuses for mm -hmm. students of color.